Good morning. Welcome to St. Charles. Let us offer together our prayer for a better understanding of true stewardship in our lives and here in our parish. Lord God, you alone are the source of every good gift, of the vast array of our universe and the mystery of each human life. We praise you and we thank you for your great power and your tender, faithful love. Everything we are and everything we have is your gift. And after having created us, you have given us into the keeping of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name and spirit of Jesus, we commit ourselves to be good stewards of the gifts entrusted to us, to share our time, our talent, our material gifts, as an outward sign of the treasure we hold in Jesus. Amen. Our presider for this Mass will be Father Rogers. Please stand and join in singing, Blessed Be the Lord, number 444, in Breaking Bread. this morning that we might be strengthened in God's love and God's life as we begin our celebration together let us pause and call to mind our need for God's forgiveness you raise the dead to life in the spirit Lord have mercy Lord have mercy you bring pardon and peace to the sinner Christ have mercy Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Don't. 
Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer our prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe all that you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vani vanities, says Koheleth. Vanity of vanities. All things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet to another who has not labored over it. He must leave property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to a man from all the toil and anxiety of heart with which he has labored under the sun. All his days, sorrow and grief is his occupation. Even at night, his mind is not at rest. This is also vanity. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil, desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you have taken off the old self with its practices, and put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh. 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbiter? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. Then I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. In 1910, one year after he had concluded his term as president, Theodore Roosevelt, bear with me as this is the last time you have to put up with one of my history lessons. After he had finished his presidency, Theodore Roosevelt began a tour of Europe where he gave the greatest speech of his entire career. In those days prior to proper voice amplification, Roosevelt was known for his booming voice. Want to hazard any guess as to why he is near and dear to my heart? And speaking in Paris, Roosevelt delivered an impassioned and inspirational address that he called Citizenship in a Republic, but has been come to be known as the Man in the Arena speech. Allowing for the fact that this can as equally be the woman in the arena, permit me to read a small part. It is not the critic who counts, Roosevelt began. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doers of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred with dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. The words of Jesus in the gospel this day, thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. Those words remind me of Roosevelt's eloquent words about the person in the arena about that person who strives greatly, striving to grow rich in a divine way, not rich in a way that would make others jealous, but the women and men that work hard at doing all that God asks of them, who struggle to attain to that which they know God has set before them as their life's goals, those persons who struggle, not because they are attempting to become famous or wealthy or powerful, but people struggling because of the challenges and pitfalls that life has thrown at them. And they try to handle all of that with grace and love, even as they seek out their true part in God's plan. Week in, and week out, from that altar, from this pulpit, I have seen the people in the arena, 
people striving to maintain their connection with God, even as they carry within them the incurable hurt of a lost spouse, a lost child, a lost parent. These are people spending themselves in a worthy cause, as Roosevelt would identify them. There are women and men who come to this church bearing the burden of illness, when even the walk into the building is a struggle. But they strive, strive valiantly, that they might grow stronger in divine matters. People enter the arena where they seek to be strengthened by all that is of God, to grow rich in the sight of God, even as they face the hardships of loneliness, addiction, financial setbacks, misunderstanding, broken relationships. These are people who, like the heroes of Roosevelt's speech, are in the arena, not striving to promote themselves in what the world might call greatness, but attempting to hold on, to hold out, and to find that which God has called them to be. For years now, I have seen it. I have been humbled by the women and men who strive in that arena. I have been inspired by the willingness to fall once, but to get up again, to try, even in the face of failure. You have been for me the greatest of examples and are deserving of the greatest of credits. And those aspirations, those struggles will continue, must continue, so that we will all know in the end that triumph of high achievement. That you have already done for me, and it will inspire me for years and years yet to come. Let us now stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With hearts turned to the Lord, we present our prayer. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, may the Spirit continue to guide and inspire them and keep them faithful to Christ and his gospel, we pray. For leaders of all nations and peoples, may they be guided by the Almighty in the just use of power, we pray. For those with bountiful harvests, may they share their abundance with the poor and needy, we pray. For our community of faith, May we share our material goods and live by the spiritual values, we pray. 
for William James Sr., whom we remember in this Mass. May all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace, we pray. For the needs we hold within our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, show us the way to your light. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that these are gifts of bread and wine may be acceptable to God, our good and loving Father. Sanctify these gifts, O Lord, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As without end, we acclaim.
Together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all of your faithful people, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles, St. Charles Borromeo, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will never be forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul. The body of Christ. Our communion hymn is found in the Breaking Bread Hymnal, number 344, Spirit and Grace, number 344.
Let us pray. Accompanied with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts and in your never-failing care for us, make us worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank all of you for coming to celebrate with us this morning, especially those who ministered for us at our Mass today. Special greetings to anyone who might be visiting with us at St. Charles this weekend. Hope everyone has a good week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our concluding hymn is found in Breaking Bread, number 446, Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm.